Coach, um, I know you hold the team to a pretty high standard, and that's kind of why you guys have won, but you got to be pretty happy with winning by 60 and um, scoring the whole way and getting the, you know, the multiple players in double digits. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really happy with the response. Um, you know, had a rough go, obviously, at Green Bay. Um, you know, I, Lori Kane's father passed away, and um, uh, some of our staff went to his funeral and service, and so missed the last couple of days of practice. But I did. I had my moment yesterday, um, this morning. That was the first time I was back at practice, and we dealt with Green Bay. And because that was not going to go away without having spoken on that, and and I thought it was, it, it, you know, it's it's doesn't lie. We just we d- didn't do enough good plays. We and I and I really think it boiled down to, you know, kind of between our ears. We just didn't come ready to play, and it's it's anti everything we're you know supposed to be about, which is you know respecting the game and and the game is hard and you better. You better do the th- work that it takes to be great at this game, and we didn't do hardly any of them, and it showed. And so that game is out there for the world to see, and we we assume that we'll see a lot more people try to play us like Green Bay did. Um, Commerce didn't, uh, and and you know w- we probably were bigger and longer at most positions, but for tonight, how are we responded and the, the way our team moved the ball and the way our team attacked them and the way our team played with pace, this was a great response to the last time we, we got in front of a crowd. You've talked about how you want 20 points every quarter and you don't want them anywhere near 20 points every quarter. You go 25 at least in every quarter. They never more than 15. It just kind of seems like that's maybe the, the prototype or the blueprint for what you want a game to look like. A 61-point win, probably not a, a realistic achievement every game, but kind of the prototype of what you guys want to do uh, game in and game out. Yeah, just not those, you know, we've seen it in our program for a long time, just three and four and five-minute droughts and just not scoring enough points that, you I mean, it's just hard to be perfect. It's hard to be perfect on defense, and teams are just so good offensively now that you've got to find ways to – you know keep pace with scoring and people that are great on rebounding or people that can run the floor and get easy baskets you got to find ways to stay in games and and you know I feel like we have more weapons and I feel like we have people we just we we just haven't been playing the right way all the time and and I think this was a great example of spreading the ball around and getting getting a lot of people different looks and and keeping the defense moving and in spin cycles versus you know, I feel like sometimes we tee ourselves up. That we everybody sees the screen coming, everybody knows it's coming. They got three seconds to figure it out, and then they swallow us up because we don't play fast enough. And and this was a good example of we kind of kept them on their heels and we kept attacking and and generally got just tremendous looks at the basket. You know, sometimes you see scores like this: teams getting a ninety or hundred, and you know, there's twenty five, thirty free throws that contribute. You guys score one hundred and eight points from the floor. I mean, it was almost all. You know, from two, from three, it was, again, you know, 111 points, not necessarily a realistic goal every game, but, you know, you always want, you said you want more or four players at least in double figures. You get seven. Alex has uh, eight, almost an eighth player. When you look at that and you kind of evaluate that, is that kind of what you tell the team? Like, this is what we want you doing for each player, game in and game out, kind of the same question, just in terms of the individual scoring. You know, I think it is. It's a little bit like, um, you know, we, we, we weren't physical enough in the post. So my message to everyone that plays in the post, and that's Charlize and Tara and uh, B and Alex and B- Bella. It's easy to pick on Alex and, and Bella, but – Anyone in the post, if you don't want to be a beast mode in there, then don't put yourself in there because that's what good teams do. They they dominate the paint. And so, yeah, the challenge is for Bella to dominate the paint and not take soft shots. And, and, the, ga- and the game is real for Alex to not be soft and not to bring the ball down and not to, you know, get it knocked away. That is real for those players who are in there predominantly. But they can, you know, some of our other players can relieve a lot of pressure on those two players by, by – getting mismatches in the post and we've had some good opportunities to do that I thought Tara was one of the only good players that was really pretty good against Green Bay and created some easy shots for herself in the lane um so and and you can just go down the line we tell um, that was the message for our post set better screens you know have intentionality in your cuts be a beast in the in the paint and then everybody else was you know 
we need Charlize to do certain things, and we need L.A. to be better. There's no question. And, and, and A.T.'s pace in our Green Bay game was really bad. And and it was it was time it's that was the message we've got to bring the ball up and we've got to get some momentum before we set up something and so I think that was just really key for us tonight we got the ball reversed we got the ball out of the point guard's hands we didn't dribble as much and again that just played into success for everybody and I think that's how we have to play we'll play against better defenders we'll play against people that take things away but we gotta we gotta we got to play that kind of mindset to to and and when we do i think you see some success that that we can have uh just any update on b obviously you guys didn't have her tonight yeah i mean it's just a little tweak and 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 one that we can manage and that's really excited about the fact that we can manage it but uh we're trying to manage it sooner than later so uh expect her back really soon but we just got to live without her for a little bit can be taught from from the trip in terms of how to how to travel with college athletics and handle your business <laughs> and all that. I'm sure it's lots of lots of growing moments. But what were some of the main learning lessons lessons from that? Well, again, Hard Rock and and uh, sport tours. I mean, it was it was uh, it was a great tournament there. It was really well run. I had no complaints. We stayed at a great place, so that was a great trip for us. So. Uh, no complaints. We were ready for three games in a row. I mean, that's hard for everybody. Obviously thought we made we, – we beat a standard bearer of a team in Maryland. Like, that was a first for our program. That was big time. And we played with passion, and we were unbelievably good. We got to rest starters, and we were so good. The bench was great against UMass, and we responded the right way, and we were well-rested compared to Green Bay. And, and then, I don't know, ask the players what they did from that game to the next because we came out and didn't play well and didn't look like we played well and looked tired and fatigued and and uh, not into it. So um, the lesson is the game is brutal if you don't treat it right and if you don't do the things that requ it requires. And Green Bay did, and they did something to us. They were soft on us, and we played into their hands and played real soft against them and let them slow the game down. And it, it turned into a real bad shooting night for us. But it was more of how we approached it and how we didn't, you know, you know, if it's two teams that someone's will is going to win, their will won. We just didn't – we didn't break their will to play the way we needed to play. So there's a lot of lessons in that. And, and they're out there. Someone else is going to play us just like Green Bay. And we're going to have to respond the right way. And, and uh, you know, that's the – Hard part about this game, but it's the beauty of it. You got to play different styles and be versatile. And um, I think, you know, I wouldn't have ever thought we could shoot that badly, but we can always shoot that bad if you're if you have that low of energy to play. You're just not gonna you're not gonna overcome that. So lots of lessons that we can learn from it. Yeah, we need her to uh, have a high bar. We need her to feel like she can go in and affect the game and, and really impact the game. And I really want all our freshmen, you know, Kira, who's kind of a freshman in some ways, <clears throat> instant offense, athleticism. I mean, there's we need some point production, but we also need defensive consistency. And, and Alex can really give us both. She's, she's high IQ. She wants to excel – She's a high achiever. She's almost too hard on herself. So she's got to balance that, but she's also got to be just – I don't care who I go against. I can I can help us. And she's got to have that kind of mindset and, and, and a little bit of confidence that we need from her. Again, I'm you know looking at the the stats. There's a lot here. I'm sure you must be uh, must be pleased with 35 assists, seven turnovers. That that's got to be towards the top. I mean, that's seven turnovers, not very many. 35 assists, very many. Well, I think Riley told me that's a school record, right? So, again, another first for us. That, that uh, and I just am proud of the fact that you know normally I think every coach in the country thinks there's. You you can have a you can lay an egg like we did. And you can come back and practice, and and your fear is what you practice won't help you win the next game. And and so the beauty of this one is, 
we got their attention and we snapped it on. But it's not that easy. It's not a magic pill. We we didn't take something and we're fixed. We clearly can regress and and not play. Uh, the way we need to play so it's just a work in progress and I just think these numbers are it's more of who we can be but we are so close to falling back I just think human nature is you get you get to feeling great about yourself and then you're not you know savage the next day and we've got to come back with the savage mindset that um, you know it's kind of you got to go it's one or the other you got to you got to beat the guy in front of you how, uh, how close is, is Jess to being back, and kind of what's her role when she does get back? Yeah, we need her to get back. She's close. Uh, it's more of just, I think if you took a look at her calf, it's a little bit smaller than the other one, so she's just getting her muscle mass back. And and then, obviously, she's she could be in the Tour de France, I think, and, and win that in the bike or the stationary bike, but running up and down the court doesn't translate, so getting her back in shape. But just another body, another big – you know, and you know you can imagine this is a short bench if you're going months and months with this many players. But again, the versatility on our team makes it. A, you know, when you got a Charlize that can play the four spot and Tara that can play the four spot, you know you've got a lot of versatility there, especially while we don't have B. Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. Thank you, go Cougs.